welcome to the Pregnancy Show, everybody. I'm Melanie Raposo. Now, if you're a couple experiencing infertility problems, it's important to make sure you get the right diagnostic tests and making sure you're seeing the right professionals. And with us today is Dr. Lauren Sanders to discuss some of these issues. Hi, thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. What therapeutic procedures are performed by radiologists? So from a, th from a therapeutic point of view, uh, radiology is limited. Most of what we do is diagnostic. We do hysteroscopography, hysteroscenography, occasionally, out, um, obviously, ultrasound, CT, MRI, and that's all to do with diagnosis. Occasionally, from a therapeutic standpoint, we'll do something called a fallopian tube recanalization, which is very rare that we actually have to do it, and that's really limited to women that we show have got obstruction to the fallopian tubes real close to the uterus. What we do in that situation is we, um, while, while the woman's sedated, we will canalize the fallopian tube with a very tiny wire about the size of a hair, open the tubes up, and it's uh, fairly successful. As I say, it's extremely rare. Most patients refer to me for that. When we do the regular diagnostic workup, the hysterosopingogram, I'll find that the fallopian tubes are actually not obstructed and they don't really need it. Now, um, how is radiology effective in the diagnosis of infertility? Well, we have a certain very small role to play. Most of what we do is because we have referrals from either obstetricians or infertility specialists, occasionally from family doctors, who want to see uh, why the lady isn't getting pregnant. So our part of it is most li mostly to do with the anatomical part, to see if the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries are anatomically correct and doing what they're supposed to do. So th the tests that we do, there are a few tests. One of them is called a hysterosalpingogram. One of them is called a hysterosonogram. And of course, there's all the re re usual radiological things involved, like ultrasound, occasionally CAT scan, people do MRI. So from a diagnostic point of view, most people that are referred to us, they're being referred to make sure that everything's correct. So the first thing that we do, and it's not everyone who does this, is that the women have a hysterosonogram, which is in, under ultrasound. We basically canalize the womb, the, the opening of the womb of the uterus. And uh, after that's done, under ultrasound guidance, we look inside the uterus while we inject saline. While we're injecting the saline, the uterus opens up. And we can see if there's any polyps or adhesions, because a lot of these ladies have had DNCs in the past. And they, we want to make sure they haven't got adhesions, which is causing the infertility problems. The polyps can be a problem too in that a lot of polyps act like IUDs and they go misdiagnosed if you go just straight to hystros hystrosalpingography, which is what we follow with. The, while the catheter is still in, we, well, in our place, we move the patient to an x-ray room and under x-ray guidance we inject dye. While the dye is going in, I can see the inside of the uterus and we can see if the fallopian tubes are patent whether they dilated, blocked, whatever's going on. So we do it all as one sort of procedure, but it's actually two procedures. Okay. Now, what are the advantages to doing um, procedures like this? Well, I think the advantages are that it tells us that one, that the woman is normal and that there's no blockages. I think the other thing that I've found over the years is that often women, just by having the procedure, will get pregnant within a few cycles. I'm not sure why that is. My guess is that the fallopian tubes can have deposits in them and what we're doing is flushing the system out. So we'll see sometimes women that have been trying for many years to get pregnant unsuccessfully have these procedures which are diagnostic procedures. Everything looks fine and you know, lo and behold they get pregnant within a cycle or two or three. Mm -hmm. So it does work. Um, do you have a statistic of sort of how many I would, women get It's hard pregnant? to say, but probably uh, 30 to 40 percent get pregnant fairly oh, really? shortly. Or maybe 30 percent is more realistic. Wow. Now, are there any risks to doing uh, procedures like this? I think risks are involved in any procedure. I think the, the most important thing when you're going to do this is to make sure you're seeing someone who knows what they're doing. Because these, these procedures can be quite painful. I recommend that the woman take an Advil or something like that. 30 to f minutes to an hour before the procedure because they can get cramping and again you have to be with some be done dealt with by someone who really knows what they're doing because if they don't that can be extremely painful that's the one thing the second thing is obviously if the person's not good there are risks like uterine perforation 
which is very rare and I've never seen it but it can occur. Um, the only other thing with hysterosal pingography there's a risk of contrast allergy because we use contrast. I've done thousands of these and I thank God I've never actually witnessed or seen that happen but it's something people should be aware of. Are there any uh, minor side effects that women will experience afterwards? I think, as I said, there's, it can be painful, so they can get some cramping. In the right hands, that can be minimal. Um, the only other thing that I usually mention to ladies is that there's a possibility of getting some bleeding or spotting for a couple of days afterwards. Right. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add that maybe we haven't talked about? Um, I think the only other thing that we do as interventional radiologists is occasionally I'll drain ovarian cysts. Um, it's not that they're necessarily a cause of, of uh, uh, infertility unless they're really large and blocking the fallopian tube. It's more for symptomatic relief or occasionally because the woman has an endometrioma and they want it drained prior to them getting into the fertility procedures, they want it drained. And rather than having them cut open surgically, we do it from below. Um, also, in sometimes women who are going into the in vitro programs, they have a large cyst and they want that cyst uh, drained prior to stimulating the ovary so that it doesn't become very large. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, great. Well, if you'd like any more information on anything we've discussed today or on infertility, please visit thepregnancyshow.com. Thank you. Thank it's you. Good to have you. Thanks a lot.